Hi, my name is Greg Smith. I am the Director of Technical Training here at Tygo Energy. And in this video, I will show you the top four things you can do to have a successful installation when using the RSS transmitter with the Fire Safety Group TS4s. The number one thing you can do when using the RSS transmitters in the Fire Safety Group uh, realm of TS4s, which are the TS4F and the TS4-2F, is to design and install the system to eliminate crosstalk. The RSS transmitter creates a keep alive power line communication pulse, or PLC. And this pulse is induced onto the existing DC home runs from the core. The keep alive signal travels up the roof to the TS4s, and if they hear the keep alive signal, then they will allow full module voltage to pass through. If they don't see the keep alive signal, then they engage in rapid shutdown and will only allow 0.6 volts to pass through. So the first thing to know is that there are two different models of the RSS transmitter. We have the RSS transmitter, which was released in 2019, and we have the RSS transmitter with pure signal technology that was released in 2023. When comparing the two, they look almost identical, but we can see that the pure signal transmitter has a lot more terminals on top, which we will get to here in a minute. So the best way that you can design and install to eliminate crosstalk is to watch these videos, to talk to our sales engineering team, and to go through our TS4 certification courses. We go into deep dive on how you can prevent crosstalk from competing power line communication systems. When using the RSS transmitter, the DC home runs must be separated by at least eight inches from different RSS transmitter systems. In other words, if you're using multiple inverters on site that have either an internal Tayo RSS transmitter or if you're using the external RSS transmitter kit, the DC wires that flow through the cores create a system and that RSS transmitter system must be separated from other PLC RSS transmitter systems. If not, then the two systems will intermingle their keep alive signals, which will then cause confusion on both of the strings belonging to the two different systems. This can result in abnormal behavior for the TS4s and they will not operate properly. The second thing you can do to design or install with crosstalk mitigation in mind is to ensure that you have the positives and negatives of each string clumped together. Do not separate the positives and the negatives and run them in different conduits or different sides of a cable tray or whatever. You have to keep the home runs from the same transmitter, positive and negative, keep them together. This will ensure that the PLC from one transmitter does not interfere with the other transmitter. It's also important to keep those DC home runs away from AC conduit as well. So do not run the DC conduit uh, right next to an AC conduit because there could be interference from the AC onto the DC lines and that will also cause the TS4s to act abnormally. If you have any questions on crosstalk mitigation for a project, please, please contact Tygo. The sites that we see that have issues, they never even talk to a Tygo rep. So it's a free service. Send us your, your projects. It doesn't matter if it's a 50 kilowatt or a 500 kilowatt system or a 15 megawatt system. It doesn't matter. We will look at it all for free. Crosstalk issues almost always happen in commercial or larger applications. Rarely, rarely ever see them in residential. Now, for the pure signal transmitter, we do have to follow some of the same uh, crosstalk mitigation strategies. However, the RSS transmitter 
is able to sync its Keep Alive signal with up to 10 transmitters. So if you have 10 inverters and you have 10 transmitters, all of those transmitters are considered one group because they are linked together and they can sync their PLC output. Now, if you have another group of 10, this would be a pretty big system, but if you have another group of 10 transmitters or 10 inverters, then you must keep those 10 away from the other 10. So you'd use the same mitigation strategies I just talked about. Now, sometimes this separation can get really tricky, particularly for large installations where you have segmented arrays and multiple inverters. You have to make sure that no conductor from any other system or from any other transmitter on DC lines, if you're just using the regular RSS transmitter, none of that conduit run can cross under any other system or DC conductor, depending on which transmitter you're using. This is why it is so important to contact Tygo Sales Engineering. We will look at your plans and we can figure out where to best place the conduit runs so that there will not be any crosstalk issues. Okay, finally, on to number two, and that is the RSS transmitter power supply. We supply this in an RSS transmitter outdoor kit. You can also buy the components individually, and you can put them in their own NEMA 3R box, and that's perfectly fine. Now, for the RSS transmitter, it's very important that you follow the instructions in the quick start guide. And what we see a lot is that installers will put a wire into this third terminal right here. Now, that third terminal is not used. It is not mentioned anywhere in our quick start guides except to not put anything in it. But we still have installers that do that. If you put a wire in there, it permanently turns on rapid shutdown. It's a vestigial feature that we don't use anymore, so you just need to make sure that you do not put a wire in there. Related to uh, the RSS transmitter power supply um, is the grounding wire. Okay? The 120 volt version does require a grounding wire that comes in the uh, uh, RSS transmitter kit. And it has to be connected in this way. As a matter of fact, it also comes with a ferrule and the red and black wires that you see here. It must be installed like this. If you're using the 277 volt commercial version of the RSS transmitter, then there is no green wire included because you don't need it. That power supply is grounded to the DIN rail. So as long as the DIN rail has an equipment ground on it, then you're fine. Now, the pure signal RSS transmitters also have a power input that requires 12 volts DC. And it's virtually the same method of, of connection as the previous um, RSS transmitter. It's the same. Now, there are more wiring uh, instructions for the pure signal transmitter because, as I said earlier, they are daisy chained up for up to 10 transmitters. And so it just becomes this exercise in attention to detail. We recommend that you use two different color wires so that you can keep them straight. And you're just going to go out of one transmitter, which is the TX terminal, and you will go into the RX terminal of the next transmitter. So transmit, receive, transmit, receive. And you just daisy chain up to 10 of them. So number three is the core connection. Now, when we look at the bottom of the RSS transmitter, we see these four terminals, two on the left, two on the right, and they are labeled core one and core two. So some transmitters are shipped with a single core. Some transmitters are shipped with a dual core. You cannot buy the cores independently, so you have to make sure that you order the right RSS transmitter. Now, they come pre-installed. Sometimes they don't, depending on the version. 
And so when you are connecting the core to the transmitter, you have to make sure that the black and white tab on the transmitter wires go into the correct terminal on the bottom of the transmitter. And they are black and white, but they have a different order. So you have to make sure that you install those properly. If you just look on the bottom and match the colors on the core, you'll be all right. All right, and that's it for the RSS transmitter. As always, if you have any questions, you can call us anytime. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section. If you wanna see a different kind of video that covers something else, put it in the comments section. We read them all. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.